request 340, so right back to that. 634, actually might be better. 32, United 2195, probably maintain, probably three four zero. Continue climb 340, United 2195, thanks. Southwest 628, Hey everybody, welcome aboard, Captain Mike here. Maybe the third time is a charm. We're gonna try this again. Um, Windows update has been wreaking havoc with this setup for some reason, this go around. Um, I'm going to try this flight for the third time programming it. And first time I had no ATC. Second time my controls weren't working right. So hopefully we can get this one in. If it doesn't work, just go around. Think I'm going to take a breather and go watch some television. But uh, with that said, I have an issue out in uh, Ontario, California, K O N T. And Twice I was into that airport and ZHSI just turned itself off for some reason. So I'm going to run that same flight again today. I spoke to Picatanga last night, the gentleman that now maintains the uh, ZHSI program. And we're going to try and see if this is uh, what the issue was. So with that said, we're all programmed up. We're buttoned up, ready to go. I believe I called for push already, and they are connected. I just have to release the brake, and we're out of here. So, let's see if that is in fact true. Well, that was another thing. I had an issue with uh, a bit of pushback. Not disconnecting. So hopefully that's fixed as well. I'm hoping we're back to normal. Start number one. And we're running a Southwest Airlines flight today. 3016 into uh, Ontario. It'll be nice when they get their networking stuff worked out. Maybe we'll have a better view out the uh, various windows. It's amazing. This one looks nice. These two are dark. That makes no sense. That's because of Laminar Research's networking. I'll turn this way and then that one will be light. These two will be dark. If we face the other way, that one will be light. These two will be dark. Yeah, more than likely your config file got screwed up. Mine was completely blank, Craig. Um, I do have a video online on how to get that working again to write out your config file. It's in um, X Planes Preferences Output Better Pushback Config CFG file. If it's blank, then that's why you're not auto disconnecting anymore. 
Well, I figured the third time's a charm, hopefully. Hopefully we can get this flight in now. But I really want to get this one in because I want to see if um, Ontario is fixed as far as ZHSI is concerned. So. All right, so you see it's automatically disconnected now. So that's more than likely what the problem is on your end there, uh, Craig. Take a look at that config file. All right, there goes the tug. Okay, auto and auto. All right, exterior lights. We are good. APU is needed. It's off. Master caution recall. We got a clean board. Flaps are set for takeoff. Transponders TA auto. Weather radar is auto. And flight controls are free and clear. See, they're coming in opposite of what they're using in the real world. I don't know. Seems to do it most of the time. Uh, yep. So we're going to use what they're using in the real world. So we're going to go the opposite way. And also, if I switch to weather, I do believe that you also get weather now. That was something else I spoke to uh, Picatanga about. Um, it just came up when we were talking about the ZHSI screens and weather just come up for uh, somewhere along the way there and I don't know if it works on my screen or if it works on that screen. I think it might be hooked up to my my captain's setup. So when I change my screen you should now see the weather as well which is pretty cool. So that actually got worked out which was unexpected and if that stays up when we come into Ontario then that problem is fixed as well. Oh look at the aircraft carrier. Yeah, Craig, and if it's blank and you don't know what goes in there, I made a video a while back. Um, it might be under the live section. If you just scroll down, you'll see like a white box in the lower left-hand corner, and that's the box that has the config file for better pushback in it, and it shows you the text that'll go in there. And what you may want to do in the future is take that out of there once it's working and save it somewhere. So if you get another update and that gets wiped out, you just got to copy it back in. I don't have my wipers hooked up here. I still have them set up on the keyboard, so... So what do we have today? Today's flight is 341 miles of 158 miles at top of climb. Short ride. Would be nice if that's fixed. If it is, then we're basically back to 100%. That would be lovely. I turned the uh, streaks off, or the draw trails as they're called. They just don't look good. You see them, they streak and then they freeze, like they're frozen, and then they start going again and then they're frozen. So I just got rid of the trails altogether. 
So I still get the weather, but I just don't get the uh, the trails on the rain. Bit of a compromise. And I also did a little bit of work to uh, my reshade settings. I brightened them up a bit. I want to see what that looks like. Might still be just a touch too dark, but with this weather, I'm not sure. See if the weather's any better over in uh, Ontario. Delta 770, kind of approach on 128.1. Delta 770, Roger. The safety announcement, Jackson, that's just part of the aircraft that uh, that X-Plane has in here. Well, the Zebo mod, that is. I'm using the Zebo mod, and then whatever the repaint that's being used has those, they play on their own. So there's no other third-party program that's running. All right, let's switch on over and let's get you in here. And unfortunately, your screens don't change. I have it set up just like that. Got you in close. Might look a little weird once we're at cruise. Moving pretty quickly, but the battery in here is shot. I've been doing... Uh, well, some work basically in here. and I forgot to plug it in and charge the battery. So, battery is just about completely drained. So, I have it plugged in now, charging up. And unfortunately, I can't give you that screen when it's plugged in. I have to have it run into the other computer. So, I can't give you that. Let's swap this out now. And what do we have on the way out? We have Catfish 3. San Francisco looks pretty cool. Across the bay. Okay, there's nobody on short final. I just wanted to make sure since they're using the opposite runway with what you're using. Ten notification is complete. Exterior lights as needed. They are set. Engine start select is to continuous. Auto throttle is armed. Transponders T A R A auto and my clock is up and running. Release the brake. Forty percent and we are out of here. Approaching one, two. Game is how much? This flight deck here and everything to set up is a hundred thousand dollars. This flight deck is professionally built by Flight Deck Solutions, a company in Canada. And I think nowadays you might not even be able to get one since they're dealing with professional entities only. American 
Uh, we're stable. Toga. Thrust is set. Airspeed's active. Looks like my flight controls are working. Check. Throttle hold. And we are stable through 80. See, they're using the opposite runway. B1, rotate. Positive rating. Gear up. Oh, you can feel that wind pushing. you're going to take this whole ride. I want to see if it, actually, you know what, we're going, sh let me set this, instead of me flying it. She should hold at three, hold at four, and then we're going above six, and then we should be good. So let's see if she behaves the way she should. Flaps one. Dump these wipers. Uh, you know what? My co-pilot may jump up here to go for a ride. Flaps up. Okay, so we need to be 3,000 or below. Beautiful. Once we pass Raleigh, we should be good up to four. Then after that, we need to be above six, but that should not be a problem, that constraint, that catfish. Nasty weather out there. Clouds look pretty cool. Did I not turn that wiper off? Dead on intermittent. <laughs> no, I started saving for this flight deck, gamers. Oh, man. 15 years ago? Not for this particular flight deck, but I knew I wanted a flight deck, and I knew that it was going to cost a pretty penny. So, aside from my retirement money, I also put money aside to start saving for this. So... And when we were in, uh, well, before we made our move to uh, Florida, I told my wife, I said, listen, if uh, if we move and get a house, I said, uh, the garage is mine for my flight. I thought I'd turn that off. All right, that should be off now. I told my wife, the garage is mine. She's like, what for? I said, for my flight deck, I said, I want to build a flight simulator set up in the garage. All right, Sam, we're good up to four now. Good. And uh, she just nodded her head, smiled, thought I was out of my mind, and agreed. And I think we were down here for about a year. And I told my wife, I said, Dawn, you have to get the car out of the garage. And she said, why? I said, I have a delivery coming. I'm like, what? I said, my flight deck is coming. And that is when the realization hit. She was like, what are you talking about? I says, remember that chat we had in New York about me getting my flight deck? And here we go. We're on our way up. So we need to be above six at Catfish, which we should be. We're 4,800, 4,900 climbing. So, and then that's it for constraints on the way out. And I said, remember that conversation we had? The garage is mine for my flight deck. And she was like, you were serious? I said, absolutely. I said, come here. I'll show you what I just purchased. And uh, I took her to the website, and she looked, and she was like, how big is that? <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, he's good. I said, it takes up the whole two-car garage. So, sure enough, later that day, a truck pulled up outside. Some pallets got delivered. <laughs> And then I had Steve, which is uh, Flight Deck Solutions IT. He was down here for a week. 
uh, with me. Um, he basically did most of the building. I was the gopher guy and helped him along the way. And then I had a friend of mine that also has a flight deck down here, uh, Mr. G. And he's got an amazing setup. And he came over and gave us a hand as well. And we had this whole thing built in a week. Hard to believe that was all oh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 9 years ago. That's 9 years now. Well, you may be able to have one. Game is one day. You just got to put that money aside. Don't touch it. All right, that's 10. They went climbing up beautifully. Temperature's good. <laughs> yeah, you just got to put that money aside. Can't let it burn a hole in your pocket. What I did was every time I wanted to spend that money, I would go on YouTube and I would watch videos of individuals that had something like this set up to try and get that ingrained into my head not to spend that money because this was the end result. And believe it or not, it actually did help me save that money and not burn through it on stupid stuff. And this is the end result. Which is good because now I'm on oxygen. I don't get out much. And it's if I don't have this, it's television. So I'd rather be in here than TV any day. So we are inbound KX, which puts us at the end of the SID out of Oakland. I'm surprised that volume is that high. You would think the, the door is open. I wonder if I can adjust that. <laughs> what are we looking at? We have <laughs> 122 miles now to uh, top a climb, 312 to go. And that's 20 minutes from the gate. And we're getting bounced a little bit, but it's not that bad. So we will let them run around. So the big test is going to be on the way down to see if these screens go blank when we come uh, when we get into the uh, Ontario, California area. Because I'm two for two coming into the airport where he just went blank. So I'm hoping pick a tank and hit the nail on the head. This is what it is. You know, we'll find out soon enough. So let's see, we're doing at what, 1828? It's 1741, so less than an hour, man. Well, that's what I run. I run Windows 10. I don't run Windows 11. Windows 10 does everything I need. I don't need all the extra bells and whistles that come with 11. I run uh, Windows 10 Pro. And that's it in all my computers. And they, numerous times I've got updates on all these telling me free update to 11, free update. No, thank you. As long as this setup works with X Plane, uh, with Windows 11, uh, Windows 10, it's all right by me. All right, so we are at transition altitude here. So, altimeters at standard pressure, which we are, and basically we're coming up to monitor, monitor, monitor. So, and two, fuel flow's good, oil pressure's good, temperature's good, oil quantity's good, vibrations are fine. We are climbing up beautifully, and the temperature is nice. And when we get into KX, we should have 10.6 on the fuel. We're at 12 right now, and we'll have 7-4 when we get into Ontario. Pretty cool ride. The clouds look nice when they match. Um, the lower clouds seem to match a lot better than the ones that are at uh, flight level, as you can see. 
they kind of disappeared between the monitors here, between the two computers. So hopefully a network uh, update from uh, Laminar Research is going to be out soon. I'm looking forward to uh, their next one coming out, point one. That one gives the CPU just a little bit of a boost, and that in and of itself, I think, is going to help me out with the 4090 cards that I have in these computers. May be able to push these just a little bit further. Okay. All right, we're off that shot, so. <laughs> and I'll take the weather now. You can have terrain. Yeah, I think after I purchased my flight deck, Jackson, I think the hardest part was waiting for the lead time before they were getting to me, waiting for it to get delivered, and not saying anything to my wife either. I kept that on the side until it was on its way. This way, there was no way it was going back. <laughs> that's 123, that should be in range. Looks like we got a mix. A little bit of peekaboo going on down there. Nice. So we're passing 24.5 for 3.70. Another 88 miles ago, top of climb. And I hope this works on the back end. If it doesn't, I think we're back 100%. And with unexpected uh, weather for the 2D screens back there, which I did not think was uh, going to happen at all. So that's rather nice. Sixty-three knot crosswind. Huh? Well, that's why I mentioned it to my wife when we were still in Brooklyn. MS-2020, it does work with device interface manager, but I'm having problems with my yoke, rudder pedals, and tiller. Just way too sensitive in uh, MS-2020. And I've not been able to figure that out at all. And since, was it SU-15, 14, whatever the one that just came out not that long ago? All of my buildings look like they're bolted. Um, they don't fully develop for some reason. So I have no idea what's going on with that because I checked my internet connection and the ping is like 1.7 milliseconds and my down and up low speeds are over 9,000 megabits per second. 97, 36 I think was on the down and the other one was like 97, 40 something on the up. So. It wasn't on my end. I think it's their service. So, until I get my yoke and rudder pedals working, MS-2020 is out. But you can set up all your buttons, switches, dials, and everything using Device Interface Manager. And the software is free. The learning curve for someone that's new may be a little rough because it is still in uh, early beta. Um, version 2.0, I think, is going to be coming out shortly. 
So Niles has been doing a lot of work on that program. And it works great. If it wasn't for my yoke and rudder pedals and Tilla being way too sensitive and the buildings um, just looking like molten masses, um, it would be great. Well, it depends on the flight deck and the hardware interface, you know, the hardware software interface that you're going to use, Jackson. So, when I run X-Plane, I'm running FDS to XP from my hardware software interface that was created by Picatanga. And then I'm using the glass screens that are now maintained and updated by Picatanga, but were created by a gentleman named Mongoose. So, when I fly in MS-2020, I'm using the PMDG aircraft, so that's payware, so you're going to have to get that for your flight deck if you don't have it already. Um, you're going to need device interface manager, and the screens that you're going to have to pop out, you're going to have to pop out from PMDG and MS-2020 because Air Manager doesn't have them available. So if you don't have a computer that's really hooked up and you know ready to perform, because you have multiple screens you have to run. Now, I can run seven or for one computer, and it runs great. But I'm running, uh, what was it, a 58, 59, 60, X3D, whatever it is, the latest one from AMD. Um, I'm running DDR5 RAM at 6,000. Um, I, I have uh, the 990 Pro in here, two terabyte drive, so everything in here is state of the art. So even with the 4090 board from ASUS, and it's able to perform very well, I'm surprised. It is surprising to me, because when I run X-Plane, I run one computer, one monitor, one computer, one monitor, one computer, one monitor, and it struggles to give me stutter-free performance. So, X-Plane is still in beta, so maybe they're going to get all that tweak and settled out, and things will change. So, we'll see. See, now you can see the clouds don't match between the two computers here. They look pretty good on this side, though, between those two computers. So now they're starting to fill in. At least they're filling in now. Sometimes they don't fill in at all. All right, we're looking pretty good. What are we cruising at here? Now we're going to bump that up. We'll be cruising at Mach 0.8. Get in here as early as we can. I was going to have a Kanish for lunch, but uh, that didn't work out all that well. That one, uh, my wife buys a four pack from Gabriel's, and that one's a little bit too uh, <laughs> freezer burned. <laughs> so, get this flight in quick and then grab something to eat. Pay attention there, Johnny. So we were looking at top of climb at 45 miles, and we have 234 miles to go to Ontario. The one good thing is device interface manager that's being developed, which is freeware or donationware, once he finally gets his website or whatever it is set up for donations uh, will work with uh, X-Plane it'll work with MS-2020 and it'll work with P3D which is pretty cool one hardware software interface and you'll have a, a choice of three base platforms to fly out of which is pretty cool and up until him developing that, that was unheard of it was specific for a particular platform so, this is really going to open up the door to uh, a lot of different flying for people. And it's nice because they both have their plus and they both have their minuses as far as what you're given is, you know, options and performance wise. X Plane, I have, I think the Zebo Mod is the best performing aircraft I've ever flown in flight simulation. And I've been in multi million dollar simulators a few times. And 
it mimics that multi-million dollar sim quite well. Now granted, I have real yoke and water pedals that I'm using, um, so I can really compare the two. I'm just not able to get that same feel in MS-2020. So that's one, you know, item that's not in MS-2020's favor. But MS-2020 has photogrammetry, which looks amazing when it's working. Uh, you know, you fly through Manhattan. Manhattan looks like Manhattan. It's amazing. It's absolutely phenomenal. But when it's not working well and the servers are suffering and struggling, I guess for the amount of users that are on there, it's just, uh, it looks like everything was just like melted from a, you know, a war zone. So, at P3D, I've flown in a long time because I really don't see the need. I think they're a little too far behind the times for what I want in flight simulation. So, but for those of that want P3D, you'll have that available to you as well which is rather cool. So, lotion. Lotion, we should have 9.8 on the fuel. We're at 10.3 right now. We're looking pretty good. Still have that kind of rocking and rolling going with the uh, Zebo mod. I don't have the 3D panel that I can check when I was uh, talking to uh, Picketanger on uh, Discord last night. Uh, he he showed me or told me that uh, if you look at the 3D panel, you can see that the Zebo mods yoke actually goes like this <laughs> and matches the plane as it's making its moves. So I don't have a 3D flight deck to check unless I run a 4K uh, Zebo because I took the entire you know all the objects out because I don't need them. But I do want the wipers and I do want the 3D rain effect which looks way better than that Star Wars stuff that we get using the external view. <coughs> yeah, you can see the clouds don't match again below now. Come on, Austin. Man, you got to get on networking, man. Slip some of that stuff in and your graphics fix it. Point one. Oh, look at that tailwind just about. 112 knots. I don't usually get help. I'm usually fighting headwinds or crosswinds, but that's probably the best that we've had. We are getting rocked a little bit. I may put them in their seats if this keeps up. The view is rather nice, though. You know what? They're getting in their seats. We're getting bopped around just a bit too much. Hey Jackson, the flight deck you have coming, is that uh, going to be uh, in pieces? You have to build all of the individual panel sections? Or is it coming pre-built as, uh, you know, you've got your overhead, your aft overhead, your MIP is already set up, your pedestal, and you just have to put all the pieces together? I guess it's like those radio control planes. It all, is it almost ready to fly? Or is it a complete kit you have to put together? When I had mine delivered, I had it set up. It came in chunks. The pedestal was set up. The throttle quad was set up. The bit was already mounted to the base. So everything else had to be put together. The, the forward overhead was one piece. The aft overhead was one section. And then we just took the sections out and just put it all together. All right, we're coming up to cruise now at 37,000. That's 37 minutes from the gate. And we've got 187 miles, 186 miles now to uh, Ontario. We get in at 1828. It's 1757 now. So we got about a half hour. We'll be in. Oh, that's cool. And our fuel is right on the money. And 104. So what are we looking at? We got top of descent at less than 60 miles now. So we're not going to be up here very long. 
123 knot tailwind just about now. Nice. Keep pushing. Looks like someone's heading the same way we are. A little bit lower than we are. And we can cruise on top of him and get in before he does if he's heading to Ontario. Man, look at that blanket of white. We slide right underneath that. And speaking of that, let's actually have a look at the weather. That should be in range. Let's just say 8, 10. Few at 85, few at 22, broken at 25. And we're looking at 29.99. So the weather's gotten a little bit better. Not much, though. And, okay, that looks good. All right, so let's go and have a look at Ontario now. Oh, you can't follow along. I'm sorry, I forgot my, uh, my monitor. Now we got Ziggy 7 coming in. And constraint wise at flavor 250 at 14. And HF. Oh, good thing I came in here. This whole thing is not right here. Wow. L-A-N-D-O. I'd like to know what happened to that. That was fine. When I checked it before I left. PMD. Flavor Flav. F L A. What is that? V R. Flavor Flav is two fifty at fourteen. Right. All right. Wow, it really dumped this whole thing. And I said we're good down to 14, so let's get that. Yeah, what do we have? 27 miles top of descent. They're already in their seats. Good. All right, SB. High top. Nitty. Right. If the nitty were hit, Ziggy, is Ziggy. Let's have a look at that. Whoa. The winds just change on me here. Here we go, we're descending now, and you're coming down. All right, good. Two fifty at fourteen, and then we have thirty four hundred. All right, let's get that in as well. Oh, 
Might as well do this. Deuce. One oh nine seven. Two fifty eight. Four point three five. One two four three five. Red flight nineteen six seven. Center spirits one zero eight with the out of ten three. And what are we looking at here? All right. Good. 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 That's looking good. All right, top of descent in 10 miles. We've got 130 miles to go. Good thing I had a look at that. All right, what do we have here? We'll be coming in at a buck 48. That's looking good. All right, you know what? Yeah. All right, enough of that. All right, that should be in range, and we're looking at a buck thirty. All right, we're looking at 125 miles to go. Wow, look at that, 140 knot crosswind. Woo wee! All right, uh, give me you. Do we get on Ziggy here? We don't get on until PMD. All right, we're on our way down. That's 45 minutes from the gate, and that's 33 minutes from the runway. And we've got 120 miles to go. And let's see if they're on, shall we? Let's see if they're on. All right. And that is in. Let me have you and you, Buck 148. So now is where the real test is coming in now. We really want to take a look and see if these ZHSI screens are going to just blacken out and if ZHSI is just going to shut down on its own. And at Saudi, we should have 9.1 on the fuel. We're at 9.2, so we're looking pretty good. We're coming down beautifully. Temperature is nice. We are looking good here. And we're going to 118. Clouds look pretty good now. Now they match rather nice. They look good. And let's go back to... Ziggy. All right, land down. Nine one. We're at nine one. Fuel is right on the money. And we'll have eight four when we get in. You want some drag? We'll give you some drag. Hundred and four knot tailwind. Yeah. Now they did this ride in the real world in an hour and 14 minutes. Right now we're at 47 minutes, so we're gonna see just how close we come to uh, the real world. And we're not gonna come up on that chart until we hit uh, Palmdale. So, we still have another 30 miles before we get on there. Although you don't have the charts anyway. Like, nothing I can do about that. This battery is just shot right now.
All right, now. The CDC HSI screens keep working. Speeds are creeping. All right, we're on 100 miles now to go. We've got 90 miles now to uh, Ontario, uh, California. And we should drop onto this. All right, I should be on that chart in about 20 miles. And it looks like I've pretty much fixed all the issues with the Windows update. I'll take terrain now. Windows update wreaked havoc with this setup, this go around for some reason. I don't know why. But the sound got screwed up. My flight controls got screwed up. Hey, who knows? Maybe MS 2020 flight controls will work now. I'm about to go try that. <laughs> Maybe we'll get lucky. Did I eat the last comment? I don't know what that means, Jackson. I would think that's got to might be a typo there. Or <laughs> oh, that's enough speed break there, Louis. Yeah, see now the clouds are a mismatch again. Comes and goes. Doesn't look like there's much more weather out there. On the way in, anyway. So, PMD, we should have 9-1. We're at 9-1. Fuel is looking good. We're coming down beautifully. And we should have 8-4 when we get in. So, fuel's not going to be an issue unless I can't put it down. Or, if the weather's that bad, here comes the rain. So, Shadow is not here. Give me this. He'll decide to come up here now because I moved the keyboard over here so I can get to my wipers since they're not hooked up into here. United 11 to oh, and all, this has been a great ride. Yeah, see? The mismatch. It's a little screwy. Now, that's a pretty cool view. Although, we're getting rain here and no rain here and here. Go figure. Clouds look nice now. Touch too soft though, but not bad at all. All right, we're looking good. We're inbound flavor flav there. 107, is it? And we need to be 250 at 14. We're at 260 right now. So that's a pretty cool view. Nice. And we're on that chart, although you, you can't see it. I screwed up. I didn't charge up the battery for you guys, unfortunately. I forgot. I wonder if this would hook up wireless. If it's strong enough, it'll work. If I can hook this up wireless, then I can have it plugged in all the time, and I wouldn't have to worry about the battery. I wonder if Duet works like that. 
Alright, that's going to be coming into range now. And don't look right, wait a minute, let me take a look at that here. Is that blue? Is that blue? Yeah, okay, 3400, all right. That's correct. And what heading was that for one Bravo Victor? One Bravo Victor, flying angle one zero. One zero zero. One eight zero heading still behind the traffic. One eight zero one Bravo Victor. I don't remember how close we got to the airport before these went out. So, but so far so good. That's eighteen. And let's see, bleed air panel to auto. Very good. Land altitude is in. Passenger signs are on. Auto brake selector is set. Flight instruments and radios. The radios are good. Core select is decision height. I'm on terrain already. And that is set. We're looking good there. Local Q and H is in. Recall. And we got a clean board. V ref and minimums are in. We're good down to 10. Oh, cool. Iced out films. Nice. And if you don't like the lighting that you see here, that's not on Laminar. That's on me because I'm using Reshade. Still working on my daytime stuff. I have my nighttime lighting down pretty good, but the daytime stuff still needs some work. My next flight might be a nighttime flight, maybe. We'll see how this goes with CHSI. So far, so far, so good. And we are right on the money there, Zeebo. Beautifully done. Got a few drops of rain here and there. Oh, that rain's starting to pick up in the front. Fourteen three, and we're looking at fourteen at Flav. Flavor there, and at two hundred fifty knots. So we're going to start to. Oh, there you go, right there. It happened right at the descent. As soon as we hit the. Uh, let me pause that for a second. As soon as we had to hit that uh, throttle down for 250 knots is where it happened. Let me bring that back up, and I want to save that log file. All right, so I've got that log file saved, and it happened just as it was telling me to reduce the throttle. 
to go down to 250 knots. So. Yep, so oh, it only happens at this airport so far. It only seems to be at KONT. And it didn't happen to pick a tanga, so it's something on my end. I just can't figure out what the deal is. I thought we had it all figured out with the completely removing the uh, airport data, the nav data. So all three of these are clean. Brand new. So I thought that might have been it, but apparently not. So we'll see if that log file shows anything. Right now, um, I haven't found anything in the critical logs from Windows. But this log I didn't check. So, But I got that log saved to the side before I started this again, or else it will overwrite the log. What are we looking at now? We're looking at 35 miles now to Ontario. And this only seems to happen once. And so we should be good the rest of the way now. Uh, the fuel is nine, nine. Uh, we're up 100 pounds. We should have eight four when we get in, so we're looking pretty good. This has been a great ride. Only issue that I just can't figure out is so far this just this airport. Uh, we're coming up on 10, so let's light them up. And this is already set. All right. Exterior lights check set. Engine starts select is continuous, and I'm already set up for terrain, so we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. Yeah, the flight deck took a week, but I had an IT here from Flight Deck Solutions that was uh, basically putting it together, and I was his handyman. So, and then I had a gentleman friend also lend a hand. So, but it took a week to put this together. But they came in sections. You know, pedestal was done, throttle quad was done, the MIP was done forward section, the aft overhead section, they came in big sections. So that's why the lead time was six months while they built this all in the in house. And let's get those going, shall we? They're not hooked up. There's only so many connectors. And I'd have to look at these switches to see how I was going to wire it up, because these are nice switches. So far, we're looking pretty good. A little sprinkle out there, not much rain. So the one good thing is you get weather now on your display, on the 2D display, so that's cool. Uh, but still haven't worked out that issue coming into uh, Ontario. So, and this is the default airport, so it's, uh, it's not like it's a third-party job where uh, maybe that was causing it. So I just don't get it. I can still swap these screens out, use a different computer, and try something else if I have to see if that gets rid of it but I don't come into this airport that quite often anyway I think that I've been here three times now that's the most I've been here and it's been doing testing so that's San Bernardino via the arrival of one 
Looking good. All right, let's bring up the approach, shall we? Get ready for that. That looks pretty good. Okay, heading 260 and descend to flight level 200. That was 36. You can hear the aircraft getting pelted with some rain now. United 1277. No, I don't have the breaker panels and the door. I also didn't put in windows because I want the air conditioning to get in here. If not, this garage will get real hot if I block all this off and not have any air in here. Unless I was actually to set up the tubes with air conditioning, but I'm not going to get that crazy. And let's bring up this other chart now. There you go, we'll get the localizer. Looking good. And what do we got? We're good to... Give me flaps one. Let's start slowing down here. That's going to go. And let me have you now. We'll take you, and we're holding at 54. And on the way out, on a mist. Yeah, runway heading initially. Twenty five hundred. What a great view. Have in the back? Yeah, it would. But then I wouldn't be able to film. Because that's where the camera is. So, give me 10. And give me the gear. Let's start slowing down. What a beautiful view. 15. And let's make sure we haven't changed. We're coming in at a buck 47. Let's bring you up now. And 30. So we have lights, engine start select is, we have the auto brake, we have landing gear, speed brake, flaps, they have been notified. My bird, I've got control. Another beautiful ride from the mod. Yeah, I think it definitely screwed around with some of my sounds in here. My trim isn't all that loud anymore either. Seven knot headwind, not bad.
continue. Welcome to Ontario! So we're gonna have to go take a look and see if there's anything in the log. And we're going to Terminal 4. We're right on the corner. Right, uh, 405 is the gate. Let's get you up and running first, shall we? So that's 57 minutes. Runway to runway. That's up. Give me a minute on the clock now. Yeah. And let's have a look, shall we? Exterior lights. Oops. Yeah, look, how about you? Get with the program there, Johnny. <laughs> and exterior lights as needed. We are good now. APU is up and running. Your damper is off. Window heat switches are off. Probe heat switches are off. Wing and the ice off. Engine start selector switches are as needed. They're off. Auto brake is off. Speed brake is down. Flaps are up. And transponders TA auto. Yes. And weather radar is standby. So they did this at 114. We're at 111 right now. So we're actually three minutes early, but we're not at the gate just yet. That was a pretty cool run. Oh yeah, seatbelt signs, yeah, they're on. Oh yeah. Porkies? Oh yeah, I've seen that movie. Long time ago. Long, long time ago. Is our gate open over there in the corner? We've got gate 405. It's terminal 4. And we should be right in the corner. And that's well over a minute. And we can even kill number two. I want to get in before Southwest because I got a feeling he's going to take out gate. <laughs>
Yeah, look, he's coming down this way. Huh? I'm sorry, pal. You're going to have to find another gate. He said, what, 405. Oh, 405, they're in our gate, so we'll take 404. They're in our gate. Bravo Zulu Alpha, American 480. Here we have our marshal there. I just added that program last night, thanks to Picketanga. He told me about it. I went and put it in. Looks pretty cool. Right. Let him run around. Let's get ground in, ground power, set the chocks, doors. All right, chocks are in position. We have ground power. And we have unconditioned air. And you are standby and hydraulics. All right, so electrical power, APU or ground, we're on ground power, bleed air. We're on unconditioned air. Fuel levers are set to cut off. Any collision light is off. Passenger signs are off. Fuel pump switches are off. Electrical panel check set. Galley power is off. Window heat switches are off. Hydraulic pumps, electric switches, two and one are off. Exterior lights as needed. We have logo and position. Flight deck flight deck switch uh, <laughs> flight director switches are off. Trucks in position and the parking brake is off. That's a wrap. Alright everybody. Well, I thought we had that item fixed for CHSI, but apparently not. So I'm gonna go take a look at that log file, get it off to Picatanga and see maybe we can get this figured out. But Right now, it only seems to be this airport where they just seem to just drop dead for some reason. Oh, and that's... I should have stopped that as soon as we got in here. That's showing 115. They did it in 114. If I would have stopped that at the right time, we pretty much would have been the same. So, we're off by a minute, basically. Pretty cool. All right, everybody. For those of you that joined me, Jackson and Corey and iStab Films, um, Captain... Who was that? Captain... I must have missed you completely. Captain Aranka. Aramka, sorry I missed you during the uh, the text there. Always enjoy the company, my friend. And a whole bunch of people here today. Gamers was here. Jackson was here. Yeah, a whole bunch of people, man. Craig was here. I hope you got your problem worked out there, Craig, with uh, better pushback. And with that, everybody, I'll catch you on my next run. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the ride.
Mexico 43, uh, making 300 knots, and uh, delete the speed on the arrival. 300 knots, delete the speed, American 1243, go fast. Set at 1222, for the Socorro, Oscar November, Mike. Oscar November, Mike. 